Hello and welcome to Lorefet Gaming Plays Ultima 5. I'm your host Lorefet and in this uh, Don't Panic Ultima 5 Warriors of Destiny new player video guide I'll show everybody on how to survive and thrive in Ultima 5. As always like, comment, and subscribe to my channel for more new player guides just like this. Do not forget to hit the notification bell so we update more. I'm really lost in town. I'm getting accosted by guards. Uh, people are mean. I just came at the wrong time and there's a creepy shadow lord type of person in town. What should I do? I need help. Don't panic. Help is on the way. We're going to help you through everything in this uh, game. So we're going to go ahead and now start with our first uh, topic. Character creation versus transfer. New to Ultima 5 from Ultima 4 is character transfer. You also create your own character too. There's two ways to start, so before we go with the transfer from Ultima 4, let's talk about creating a uh, new character. So, I'm going to go ahead and use this uh, chart on uh, what stats you get for each uh, virtue, so here we go. So, here's the deal about character creation path if you're going uh, this way. Just like Ultima 4, minus the uh, final virtue will be the class. Instead, it'll add stats to your character. So, there's a total of three rounds for that. So, you'll be asked uh, two virtues. So, for example... If you decide to do the honesty path, so per uh, round, you get three points in intelligence. Now, if you go compassion all the way, you get three points in dexterity. Valor, three points in strength, justice, which is a uh, plus one dex and plus one intelligence. Now, this is like for each round. So if you decide to, for example, go honesty all the way, then compassion for two departs, you will uh, definitely get about nine points honesty and six in compassion. So let's go over the rest of the... I should say uh, virtues. As for the rest of the virtues, sacrifice, you get plus one strength and plus one dex. Honor, you get plus one strength and plus one intelligence. Spirituality, you get plus one in all three stats. Pretty good uh, way to balance things out for that virtue. Humility, unfortunately, you get nothing, not a zip. So if you want to really challenge your character, pick humility all the way, and then uh, pick the appropriate stats for the other two rounds. So uh, definitely this is a good way to go. If I remember correctly, you start exactly at level 3. So let's go ahead and talk about the other path, which is character transfer. If you decide to go the character transfer path, go for it from Ultima 4. Now please note you might need Pix's Ultima Patcher. The, I'll probably say Google it in order to uh, get the fix for the character transfer method. So I already put the fix in, so we're going to transfer our character from Ultima 4 to Ultima 5. So all we need to do is uh, insert the uh, letter of the player's disc and of course press the drive letter. So we'll transfer our character from Ultima 4. Our stats will be totally different with this conversion. So there's our uh, character who just beat in Ultima 4. And yeah, by the way, you'll start as an avatar no matter what. Now you'll uh, be able to rename your character, even uh, give your character sex male or female. Uh, no matter what, you're, you're the avatar. Now, you lose a lot of experience points. However, you start out exactly at level 5. Because the uh, transfer will take you down from 999, uh, what we call 9999 experience points to 999. Yep, because of that transfer we did, we start at level 5. That's like a two level advantage over creating a new character. Now, uh, when we transfer a character, our three uh, stats will be strength, dexterity, intelligence at 25. Max for that is 30. You heard right. That means uh, at 30, guess what? You have to do a lot of things. But there's a good ways to uh, get your stats up really quick to throw you on your main character and more. So what we're going to do uh, right now is uh, go ahead and uh, show the uh, difference uh, between, of course, uh, character transfer and versus the uh, create new character. So here we go on that. I'm going to go ahead and go over the new character versus transfer from, from Ultima 4. Now, a uh, new character levels, a D-level method, which we'll explain later on during the course of this uh, guide, will be much more easier. Uh, in other words, is you'll easily uh, be able to level up, deal level up like crazy. So uh, this way, you can max out your stats much more uh, quicker since it's not much to uh, get experience from. More an experience table later on, uh, too. Uh, stats you can control during new character creation. So if you want to boost certain stats up like crazy, go ahead and do that. Now here's the uh, deal about transfer. You start out at level 5 versus level 3 with new characters, so that's a huge plus if you decide to transfer your character from Ultima 4. You get a huge stat boost all at 25 with character transfer, so if you decide to transfer your character from Ultima 4 to 5, you get 25 in strength, dexterity, and intelligence. 
Last but not least, uh, this stat boot makes it easier to cap at 30 stats max uh, thanks to the transfer. So uh, in other words, you got 25, you decide to uh, do the level D level up method with the avatar character. You just transfer like crazy. Well, guess what? You get to 30 very easily. Shrines will also uh, take care of the uh, stat boosts uh, too. We'll talk about more about shrines uh, in the karma and shrine section. That's about it for uh, character transfer versus new character. Our uh, next part, our uh, Don't Panic guide, will be, of course, the controls, which is the uh, keyboard commands. It's time to go over the keyboard commands, so here we uh, go. Arrow keys, that's up, down, left, right. Moves your character around. Very simple, very easy to use. Spacebar, this passes time. So if you want to wait on something, wait for NPC Galloway, hit the spacebar like crazy. A is attack key, so if you want to attack a enemy, or if you're foolish, attack a guard or something like that. B is to uh, board that includes ships, horses, etc. Now uh, C is to cast spells, so when you uh, use your reagents to mix spells, you can be able to cast it. You have to remember to uh, type certain words. More on that later on. E is to enter town or location on the map. F is to fire cannon on a frigate. Uh, very useful for open seas. Unfortunately, when you uh, kill a foe open seas with the cannon, you get no experience points. That's just from me. Now, uh, G is to uh, get anything lying on the ground. You could get it. H is to hold up camp so this way you can rest mana or uh, health or both. Or H also is also used to haul repair on the ship. So if you're on a ship, your ship looks bad, hit the H button to do so. I learned that very late game on the haul repair course. I is to ignite torches, torch. So if you need a light during the nighttime or in dungeons, hit the I button if you have torches. J is to Jimmy Lock. That means uh, regular locks, not magical ones. We'll uh, talk about that more later on when we get to item section. Also, uh, Jimmy Lock is also used to uh, disable traps too. K is to climb mountains, hills, ladders, and etc. Now, in order to climb the very hard mountains, you're going to need a certain item for that. But still, you use the K button still to climb. L is to look, so you want to look at something or examine it, then hit the L button for uh, that. M is to mix, mix reagents for a spell, so you got to make sure you uh, type in the correct letters, then put in the right reagent, wrong one, yeah, bad things happen. More on that later on. N is new order of the party, if you want to re-swap your order of your party members, this is a good uh, button to uh, do so. O is to open door or chests, so that's a good way to uh, open things up, or uh, for example, you want to get something from a chest. P is to push or pull. You're going to need that for a few times in this game. Q is to quit and save. This is your uh, button to save your game. Good news is you can save almost anywhere except for, of course, combat. R is to raid weapons and armor. So if you want to equip your weapons and armor you uh, got from battle or stolen from treasure chests or actually uh, pay for it, the R button is your friend. S is to uh, search. So if you want to search for, for example, a trap on a treasure chest, the S button is uh, there. Also search things on the ground. T is to uh, talk. If you want to talk to NPCs, go ahead and use that. You're going to be using that quite a bit. U is to uh, use certain items. So you could use potions, scrolls, or anything else of the matter. View is to view a gem, AK. Okay, this is your map button. So hit the V button. You get to view where you're at on the map, as long as you have a gem. X is to exit transportation or transport. So for example, you want to exit a ship or horse, hit the X button. Y is to yell commands on a ship, for example, like for instance, if you want to get the sails going or remove the sails. Also, uh, the Y commands for words you discover on your uh, journey or yell a certain name. Keep that in mind on, uh, be careful on what you yell. Z is to see stats and more. This will see your stats, your item menu, your reagent and menu, your spell menu, certain item menu, and uh, more, plus your character's uh, uh, stats too. If I didn't mention that already. Now, uh, 126 is to select after, after player. So, for example, if you want to uh, fight as your avatar in battle only, then of course I uh, hit the 1 button. Now, 0 uh, deactivates whatever uh, button you uh, did for 126. So, if you want to uh, get to uh, turn base, go ahead and uh, do that. Control uh, plus K, that means this will view your karma. Great way it tells you how much karma you do have. You're going to need high karma at a certain point in the uh, game, by the way. Uh, control E is to exit the game. So if you want to exit the game, hit this uh, button. That's about it for uh, keyboard commands. 
Now, uh, for the next part of this uh, guide, we're going to go ahead and talk about is uh, starting out. So when you go south at Yulolo's hut, you arrive at the side po post. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go to the Castle Britannia, or actually the Britain area. Just follow the direction south. Reason being is we're going to get our first slingshot. So uh, Ultima 5, here's the deal. You could either get Regents that's uh, north east of you, or right away get your slingshots. You want to start with these slingshots because they cost no ammunition at all, number one. Uh, number two... They're easier for you to farm the troll bridge. We'll talk about the troll bridge more, but for uh, now, we're almost there. So just go direct it south, southeast after you get past the mountains like I did. You arrive there. Now, a uh, word of caution. Uh, this is uh, my uh, playthrough from the uh, first time I actually played this version of Ultima 5. When you see a words like this, an era of falsehood, those surrounding, run out of town and camp. Hit the H button to hold up until the next day. Yeah, it's a 24-hour process. They uh, raid the towns of Shadow Lords. And there, it's the perfect time. So we're at 9 a.m. That's when the shops are open. So uh, try to avoid the guards for the pe best part when you go into uh, towns like this. Reason being is uh, some of them will start to charge you money. Yeah, they'll tax you, especially in Minoc. In fact, Minoc, they take half. That's a warning from me. Anyways, uh, Britain, it's not bad at all with the guards, but still... What you want to do is, is after you're done with the guards and look around, just uh, go north. And then at the crossroads here, go west, and there is your first shop. This is where you want to buy some slings. Uh, reason being is uh, simple and easy. Those slings will help you out starting out until you uh, be able to have enough money or you get lucky, get some bows, the adventure crossbows, and the of course the uh, magic axe. Unfortunately, magic axe doesn't uh, sell here. They sell in you. So anyways, make sure everybody in your party buys some slings. Keep on buying slings until you have, a, 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 at this point in my party, three all three members having it. Also, make sure you do keep your melee weapons because uh, if enemies uh, attack you at close range, yeah, you can't use your sling. But still, this is a great way to start with a sling and then eventually swap to your uh, weapon. Very important to uh, definitely equip that. So I'm going to go ahead uh, ready right now, show you how that is, that is done. So uh, go ahead and, of course... Uh, what we're going to do is remove the long sword. Yeah, to select that. We cannot, uh, of course, uh, equip the sling with uh, both hands not freed. So uh, let me uh, make sure. Uh, I tried the shield, but no. You got to make sure uh, both hands are free in, court in order to clip equip the sling. So, however, uh, the uh, good news is when you do uh, get into uh, combat, yeah, you can switch it back from sling to sword. In this case, of the avatar character. See? We equipped our uh, first character. We're going to go ahead and uh, quickly uh, finish that up. So, yeah, definitely get the sling. And if you have enough money or so, go for crossbow, like I said before. And then the, uh, after that, uh, magic axe. You can go for bow, too. The troll bridge is a great place to start out farming stuff, too, for free. Eventually, you will find a location. I'll show you later on in the video how to get some really good items with little to uh, no effort. So, let's uh, go ahead and talk about the next section, which is talk to people. This is a uh, very important talking to people will get you information and uh, of course much more. So for example, talk you just talk to this NPC, always say name and job. Uh, you don't have to say health because that's uh, not like that from Ultima 4, so you don't have to worry about that. So we got the person's name, which is Terrence, now his job. He keeps his orchid, or, uh, he has his orchid to earn money, so we're typing word orchid, that's another trigger word. Keep on talking for trigger words until uh, until you cannot talk anymore. Sometimes you uh, talk to certain NPCs now, and then you could come back later on if you get another trigger word, for example, from another NPC. Keep on talking to certain NPCs, they'll give you information. Be careful in Ultima 5, since uh, Blackthorn uh, now reigns in this land, there are some people that will support him. If you don't support Blackthorn and you're not careful, some of these NPCs might call the guards on you, so do be careful on that. If you want to do some infiltration, good idea to... Uh, play nice with these type of people so definitely remember talking is king in this uh, game you get information what you need also you get the mantra or anything else that's important too so let's go ahead and talk about the next section day and night in Ultima 5 NPCs have schedules they do take breaks around noon or one o'clock definitely hit the shops during the day at night certain NPCs will be at night so you have to sneak around that's fine most of the time, guards are not there during the night. Daytime, just watch out for uh, guards. So 
definitely use the time to uh, shop during the day or definitely explore at night when you need to. In Ultima 5, there are different types of shops. The one we just visit is the Weapon Armor one. Then, of course, there's the Guild shops, which sells keys, gems, and torches. And the Reagent shops, which sells reagents. Each shop is different. Remember that. Also, you get to buy and sell certain things in shops, like, for example, weapons and armor. Karma plays an important part, too, with uh, prices. So, if you have high karma, you can get some nice discounts. Low karma, you'll be paying for more. Here's the deal about inns. Uh, with inns in Ultima 5, you could drop off certain party members. You could pick up certain party members or rest. So if you don't like a certain party member, you could drop them off at an inn. Just make sure uh, you don't drop them off at one inn because you cannot rest there. So uh, you definitely want to rest if you want to, for example, heal up all your mana. Also, it's the same thing with your health too. So uh, definitely use the resting uh, at the end if you don't want to hold up the camp at all. And of course, if you have the gold too. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about food on, and how it works. Food in Ultima 5 is your lifeline. So uh, basically, if you have uh, no food, your characters will uh, take damage until their hit points drop to zero. Then they all die. You definitely want to make sure you get food. Uh, a good place to get food, first of all, is Britain, this town. Pause is nice too, so make sure you always stock up on food. More party members, more food gets consumed. Here's the deal about Shadow Lords. In Ultima 5, Shadow Lords will be in town. As you saw the warning earlier, I'm going to go ahead and explain about that a bit more. Shadow Lords will raid town. See, it says an air of falsehood that will surround thee. Now, uh, certain uh, Shadow Lords will cause things. Hatred, for example, NPCs will attack you. Falsehood, many NPCs will lie and try to steal. Cowardice. Uh, they'll uh, say some things uh, too and at times they will steal from you and also what's the worst part is the shadow lord if you get too close to a shadow lord they'll attack you if you're forcing the combat you're gonna have a very tough bout this is a fight to death unless you have a certain item that could one shot them and even if you one shot them they will still be alive so if you see a shadow lord in town uh, leave immediately I mean get out of town ASAP until the next day so remember, you see it at, for example, 9 a.m. in the morning, come back 9 a.m. tomorrow. I'm going to go ahead and go over some uh, tips about the weapons and armor. First of all, all weapons and armor has some form of weight. With the exception of a few of the weapons and armor, it has zero weight, which is uh, good. So in other words, you cannot equip a halberd, uh, spike helmet, and of course, plate mail all at once. You have to readjust your items for that in order to equip the weapon. Very important, bows and crossbows does require arrows or uh, quarrels, aka bolts. Magic axes and sling does not require ammunition. In fact, magic axes are very OP. We'll talk about that in a bit. Mooring stars and halberds can reach two tiles. Very powerful if you're grinding a certain spot. Most weapons are desk based for hit. Uh, blunt weapons, I'll uh, say, are strength based. So if you have, uh, for example, uh, fighters in your party, or I should say warriors slash fighters. Then uh, again, blunt weapons like, for example, a mace or a bury a morning star. I'm going to go ahead and start the uh, weapons and uh, give the uh, stats out. Range weapons. So let's uh, go over them now. Slings, they weight two pounds, or say weight of two. Attack six, range four. Bow, weight of eight. Attack ten, and range seven. Bows requires arrows to use. No arrows, no chance of using a bow. Crossbows, weight six. Uh, attack 12, range 8, requires quarrels, aka bolts to use. No bolts slash quarrels, no use of a crossbow. Here's the last of the range weapons. Magic bow, weight of 0, attack 15, range 15. Magic bows, of course, also requires arrows to use. Magic axe, weight 0, attack 15, range 15, can be used as a melee weapon too. So melee or range, they're both the same attack. Magic Axis Byway are the best weapons in the game. And yes, everybody in Ultima 5 can equip, of course, weapons and armor, depending on their strength. And yet, yeah, you can have tank mages. Just trust me on that. Mariah became one towards the end of the uh, game. So let's uh, go for the melee weapons. The Jeweled Sword. Weight 0, attack 1. They are really crappy. Chaos Sword, weight 0, attack negative 99. Yes, it's negative 99. Here's the bad part about the Chaos Sword. Forces user to turn on party. After that, the sword vanishes. 
Now, uh, dagger, their weight of one, attack six, range three. Daggers can be thrown, but lost after it's used. So if you have one dagger, you toss that foe, kiss that dagger, goodbye. Let's uh, go over to melee weapons now. Please note, I did toss in the blunt weapons at the same time, too. Flaming oil, uh, weight two, attack eight, range four. Gone after one use when you throw a flaming oil. Or uh, you use it to attack foes with. Main uh, gouch. That's a weight three, attack eight, defense plus one. Yes, it's defense plus one. Um, the thing about this weapon is you can put uh, this weapon in, of course, the shield hand. And then, for example, your main hand is the long sword. So, yeah, you could dual wield it. In other words, it gives you two attacks. Very nice in my eyes. Now, uh, club, weight three, attack eight. This is a blunt weapon. Throwing axe, weight six, attack ten, range four. Throwing axe is gone after one use in range. So if you have one throwing axe, you decide to chuck it. It's bye-bye. The next melee weapon are the spears. So they weigh four, attack ten, and range five. So if you decide to throw a spear at a foe, for example, a troll on a bridge, that spear goes bye-bye. Short sword, weight five, attack twelve, silver sword, Weight zero, attack twelve. So here's the deal about the silver sword: does great damage against undead. So in other words, this is like a bane weapon against the undead. Uh, for instance, skeletons and headless and uh, more. Maces, uh, they are blunt weapons. They're weight seven, attack fifteen. Long sword, weight nine, attack fifteen. Next up on the list is the Morning Star. This is a blunt weapon. Weight 8, attack 15, range 2. Morning Stars can attack two tiles and over walls and obstacles. Very useful for grinding at a certain spot, which I will reveal towards the end of the video. Now, uh, two-handed hammer, this is a blunt weapon 2. Weight 16, attack 20. Two-handed axe, weight 15, attack 20. Two-handed sword, weight 13, attack 20. Here are the last of the melee weapons. Halberds, uh, they are weight 18. Yeah, they're one of the heaviest weapons in the game. Attack 30, range 2. How birds uh, can attack two tiles and over walls and obstacles. This is one powerful weapon to have. If your characters have 30 strength, uh, you'll only be able to equip, I'll probably say, as a era plate halberd and then uh, put some iron helmet or chain cough on. And that's it. But it's a very useful weapon to have. The mysterious weapon, I will not reveal the name since it's a spoiler. It's weight zero, attack 30. This is a two-handed weapon, by the way. You have to remove the shield in order to use it. Just like the halberd, too. Glass uh, sword, weight zero, attack 99. That's the good news. Bad news about the glass sword breaks after one attack. I'm not going to reveal the location. That you'll have to discover on your own. Now, for the next section we're going to talk about is the armor. Let's uh, go over the armor stats, of course. Cloth armor, weight 0, defense 1. Leather armor, weight 2, defense 2. Ring mail, weight 4, defense 3. Scale mail, weight 6, defense 4. Chain mail, weight 10, defense 5. Plate mail, weight 12, defense 7. Our uh, mysterious armor, which I will not reveal, I don't want to spoil it. Weight 0, defense 10. That's it about it for armor. Let's talk about helmets or helms. Now, uh, next up are the helms. So, Leather Helm, weight 0, defense 1, chain cough, weight 1, defense 2, Iron Helm, weight 2, defense 3, spiked helm, weight 3, defense 3, and attack 4. What does that mean? Uh, spiked helms give party members one free attack. So, besides their normal weapon, they'll attack, they'll attack with the spike helm too. Couple that uh, I'll probably say to get the full effect on the attacks is the uh, main gouch, uh, main weapon. Spike helm and of course a spike shield. So let's go over the shields next. As far as shields go, small shield, weight two, defense two, large shield, weight three, defense three, spike shield that has a weight of four, defense three, and attack six. Now uh, please note spike shield gives party member one free attack, just like the spike helm. So if you couple that with the main gouch, and of course the spike helm, spike shield, and your main weapon, that's four free attacks. Good to use at the start of the game, of course, if you find that early on, those uh, weapons, uh, and of course, armor too. Now, uh, last but not least is the magic shield. Weight zero, it is weightless. Defense five, best shield in the game. Now, let's go over the amulets. 
as far as Amulet goes, Spike Collar increases defense. No uh, extra attack, unfortunately. Amulet of Turning increased defense against some range attacks. Not all, but against some. Ankh increases the chance of you-know-who to appear at the camp to heal and or level your character if they are at that point. Make sure your main character wears the Ankh. That's very important. Now, uh, next up are the rings. So, here's the deal. Ring of Regeneration. This will restore health as you uh, walk. Break after long use. So, if you wear it for a while and you regen your health, kiss it goodbye. Use it only in dire emergencies. Ring of Invisibility makes you invisible, but breaks after long use. If your party members are in trouble, use the Ring of Invisibility, and hopefully they can reach somewhere safe in time. Ring of Protection, increased defense. I feel like this was the best ring in the game. I have everybody equipped with that. And yeah, my defense did win up. That's about it for weapons, armor, and etc. So next part of this uh, Don't Panic Guy for Ultima 5 we're going to talk about are the items. I'm going to go ahead and go over some items. I will leave out intentionally a few key items in the game. Don't want to spoil it. Well, most of it except for uh, one towards the end. Anyways, uh, here we uh, go. Items can be found either by uh, foe chests. In other words, you kill, for example, a troll. It drops a treasure chest. Some of the items are in there. Um, also, uh, they're all in uh, treasure chests around the towns and such. A good place for items, of course, is Lord British's Castle. More on that later on. Or the uh, Guild Shop. You gotta have gold for uh, that. Now, uh, the Skull Key is a special item only found or through a certain NPC. You wanna try to find this uh, Skull Key ASAP. They usually come in fives. I did add potions for people to know what they are. So, for example, if you wanna know what a red potion does, well, this uh, guide will uh, tell you that. Uh, there are certain uh, key items that works as a spell or something like that. Again, not gonna spoil it, but uh, go ahead and use that on your own. You'll know what it is. So let's go over these uh, items. First up, keys. Used to open locked doors or disable treasure chest traps. So if there's a door that's locked and it doesn't have a special symbol around it, use the J key to jimmy the lock and open it up. It will take, I believe, dexterity in order to uh, jimmy that lock because if you mess up, then it'll say key breaks. Also great to use to uh, get rid of those pesky treasure chest traps. Like, for example, troll drops that you hit the S button to search. It says uh, you found a trap. Hit the J key to jimmy it, and boom. You can open up the treasure chest without being poisoned or hit with acid. Gems, use like a map. So you get lost in the world, dungeons, or the underworld. Well, use the uh, gem, and boom, it'll uh, find a way. Torches, light the way at night or in dungeons. Very useful, in, and also even the underworld. Skull keys, use to open magic doors. They're especially uh, doors with a... Uh, I believe like a hue around it. If you see one of those, make sure you have a skull key. Try to look for these ASAP. Next up are the potions. Here's a deal about potions. Blue, awaken an ally, put to sleep. So use a blue potion to do that. Orange, the user falls asleep. So avoid using orange potions. Red potion, cures poison. Very useful. You might be using a few of these at the start of the game. Green potion, poison user. Don't use green potions. Yellow uh, potions, cures like the lesser heal spell. So if you need emergency heal, yellow potions is the way to go. Purple, turns drinker into a rat. Do not drink this at all. If you see a purple potion, uh, just leave it in your inventory. Just leave it like a collection. Uh, white potions, like the x-ray spell. So if you want to see something through a wall, well, drink a white potion. Black potions make the user invisible. Really useful in certain situations. That's about it for uh, potions. For the next part of this uh, guy, we're going to talk about is the reagents. And Ultima 5, in order to cast magic, you're going to need to make some reagents. Without reagents, you're not going to be able to use magic at all. In fact, uh, all the reagents I'm about to show you, you could uh, definitely buy. Now, Mandrake Root... And, of course, Nightshade are the most expensive to buy, yet you could get them for free somewhere in the world. I'll let everybody discover that on their own. So, in this next section for reagents, I'm going to go ahead and tell what locations are for the best prices. So, here we go on that part. Reagents is the best price you could get for your gold. Sulfur Ash, aka Ash, that's Scarbray. 
Ginseng, that is in used Scarberry Moon Glow. Those three locations are uh, very uh, well priced. Garlic, go to you to get your uh, garlic supply. Spire Silk, I'd probably say is uh, Cove is the best place to buy it there. Here are the last four reagents for the best prices. Blood Moss, aka Moss, that is in Cove to get the best price for that reagent. Black Pearl, go to Scarberry for uh, that. Now Nightshade, the lone spot in the world, that's free. Now here's the deal about that. At that spot, if you discover it on your own, what happens is, is uh, you have to get there by midnight. At midnight, before 1 a.m., you can search a certain patch. Uh, when you do, you get some nightshades, random numbers, but it's a good amount. If you don't want to do that, uh, like once every, tw uh, I should say, 24 hours, then Cove is the best place to buy the reagent. Now, Mandrake Root, lone spot in the world's the best place, just like nightshade. You got to ride there at uh, 12 before uh, also 1 a.m. in the morning. If you don't want to do that, Moonglow is the best place to do so. That's about it for reagents and reagent prices. Next part is the runic alphabet I'll briefly go over. In Ultima 5, you will have to uh, figure out the runic alphabet. This is purely optional except for at one location. But still, uh, the scrolls, for instance, you have to uh, go ahead and pick the first letter of, uh, of course, each of the runes. For example, A and T, that is, of course, uh, negate time. So if you find a scroll that has... Uh, the runic alphabet of those uh, both letters then of course you'll definitely want to use that so uh, definitely use this uh, chart if you're stuck on the runic alphabet it'll help you out a great deal now for the next part of this uh, don't panic guide for Ultima 5 Warriors of Destiny we're gonna go ahead and talk about stats and classes it is time to uh, go over the classes the stats I'm gonna even toss the experience chart too so uh, I'm going to go ahead and go on the right side. I'm going to ignore the Strength, Intelligence, and Dex for now. Magic. So H HP is your uh, current hit points. HM is your max hit points. EX is your experience points. And uh, also above you, it tells you what level you are. Like, for example, in the class, I'm a level 8 avatar. Uh, good means is I'm in good health. So I'm going to go ahead first uh, go over the uh, stats. So here we, here we go on that. There are three stats that are governing Ultima 5. First of all is Dexterity. Uh, this uh, does uh, governs hit rate, speed, number of attacks, disable traps, and dodge attacks. This is your number one stat you should definitely get up. Next up is Strength, Melee uh, Damage, uh, Strength, Hit, Rate, Weapons. In other words, uh, if you have, a, for example, a, a two-handed hammer, that will uh, definitely uh, focus on that. And also, uh, it will get you faster on equipping heavy gear too. By the way, everyone can uh, equip heavy weapons and armor in Ultima 5 since the fact that uh, if everybody has 30 strength and you probably including your mages, yeah, you'll be able to do that. Now, intelligence, it rules the number of magic points. Unless you're a bard, that gets cut in half. More on that later on. And, of course, shop discounts, too. Now, here's the deal. All stats are capped at 30, and all classes can get to 30 in each of the three stats. So, for example, Mariah the Mage, if she has 30 strength, 30 uh, dexterity, and 30 intelligence, She's capped out. Uh, you should definitely get your avatar capped out ASAP. So let's go over to the th uh, four classes. The uh, first class is the fire class. They cannot cast magic at all. Perfect candidate to uh, guard the camps. Easily uh, focus on strength and most likely use heavy weapons and armor with ease. So it's a good idea to always put the fire on the front lines. Now here's the deal about the bard. They're like a fire but able to cast magic a little bit weak in strength. I'd say dexterity is their best uh, stat. Magic points, unfortunately, for a bard are cut in half. So, for example, if you max out their uh, intelligence to 30, they're only going to have 15 magic points. Uh, now the mage. This is the magic user of Ultima 5. Mage's uh, magic points equal to their intelligence. For example, they have 30 intelligence to 30 magic points. If you have, uh, for example, uh, 30 intelligence and, of course, their uh, level is 8, they'll be able to cast all the magic in the game with ease. The Avatar, that is you. That is the only class that is you in the game, no one else. Able to cast magic like mages and get the full mage benefits for magic. 
able to wear heavy gear like the fighter. Yeah, and also uh, great with dexterity too. You're really a powerful character you start out with. So that's about it for the four classes. I'm going to go ahead and go over the experience chart. Here's the experience requirements to get to a level. Now, as always, Lois is uh, level one, which is uh, zero experience points. So you get 100 experience points on a character. Then you go uh, rest at the camp. You see a certain uh, spirit. You'll get to level two at 100 experience points. At level uh, three, that's 200 experience points. Level four, that's 400 experience points. Level five is 800 experience points. Level six is 1,600 experience points. Level seven is 3,200 experience points. And level eight is 6,400 experience points. It's a long road to get to level eight. It is really worth it for your avatar if you want to really push it. It's worth it for your mages too since their uh, circles, I should say, is uh, by levels. So let's uh, do go ahead and uh, talk about the uh, next topic is magic in Ultima 5. As I uh, said in reagent section, you're going to need reagents in order to make magic. Yeah, magic does uh, associate with gold. You have a lot of gold, you'll be able to make a lot of spells. So in order to create a spell, hit the M key to mix and then type the correct one. We're going to do Nox, which is cure poison. And now we're going to go ahead and pick the right ingredients, which is, of course, ginseng and garlic. Hit M and then type the number. We're going to hit one and we just made Nox cure poison. So I'm going to go over each and every one of the circle of magic for uh, spells. So here we go on that. Also, please note I left out three spells on purpose because you want to find those on your own. Now, uh, remember in Ultima 5, for every time you level up, you have access to a circle. So, for example, if you're level 8, you have access to all eight circles of magic. If you're level 4, you only have uh, up to circle 4 and under. So, here's the first circle. Requires level 1. And Nocta is Cure Poison. Make this ASAP because you're not going to be able to have enough keys sometimes to open up chests and you're going to get poison. Very important to do that. Man, I uh, lesser heal. Make this too, because again, you're not gonna have potions. I should say to heal you. So instead, make plenty of these. Now, in lore, that's a light spell that is like the torch. I advise not making it unless you're out of torches. Anzu, that means it cures sleep. So any of your party members asleep, go ahead and make it. Grab port, that is magic missile. It's your uh, single damage uh, spell. If you want to make it, go ahead and do so. On to circle two. The uh, second circle requires level two, so here we uh, go. In Wiz, that's the locate spell. That's all right. There's better, of course, uh, magic to uh, locate things and such for it. Rel Hurt, that is wind change. If you're really going to ship a lot and using the cells, this will be a very useful spell. And Sank, that's the unlock spell. That's like a regular keys. My advice is this. If you uh, get, uh, I should say, caught by the guards more often, and you pay up gold because of uh, bribery and such, Make plenty of these because uh, if you refuse to pay and you don't fight, you get sent to you prison. What happens is all your uh, keys are gone. So definitely make plenty of these on your first time playing Ultima 5. Calzen, that's the Summon Ammo spell. It's all right, but I, I don't use Summon Ammo. I'll have my party members kick some butt. And Zen Corp, if you're facing a lot of undead, uh, this is a good spell for it to repel undead and make some run. On to uh, Circle 3. Here's the third circle of magic. You have to be level three in order to cast it. Vast lore, greater light. You want to make plenty of these. It's a bigger light radius and real useful. And pour. Make this ASAP because it's like a blink spell. It teleports you from one location to another. You cast in pour. Then, for example, you go east. You blink over uh, sections if you uh, can. I use this quite a bit in the underworld. You will too. Enzu Grave, that's a wall of sleep. Cast it in front of you, and if foes try to get through it, they might go to sleep. It's all right. Vast Flam, that's a ball of flames. Single damage spell, okay. Wall of poison, again, just like the uh, wall of sleep, but instead of sleeping, it's poison. In Flam Grave, uh, that is useful in Ultima Online. This one's all right in Ultima 5. If you want to make it, go ahead and do so. This is the fourth circle of magic, aka it requires level four, in other words. And Grave, the spell feel great to have until you get a certain item. So if you don't have a certain item yet, make plenty of these. However, it will not dispel all fields. There's a 
certain feel it will not do. Death poor down level, it does not always work. It's not like Ultima 4 where you get to keep on going down level and get away with, of course, going through dungeons quick. No, Ultima 5, they make you go through it actually. Us uh, poor, that's upper level, again, does not always uh, work. Ensanct, that's a protection spell. If you need uh, more uh, defense, it's good to have Ensanct Grave. It's a protection field, cast on you and your party, and you have some fun with more protection, but for everybody. Wizquaz reveals invisibles. In other words, if a foe's invisible, pop this baby. On to the fifth circle. Here are the fifth circle of magic. So here's the deal. You're going to be really using some of these. First of all, Vast Manai, one of the most useful healing spells in the game. Good news, full heal. Out, uh, uh, bad news, outside of combat. Yes, that's the bad news. But good news is you get a nice full heal. Make 99 of these when you can. And export magic unlock. Again, when you get caught uh, and you get sent to you jail, all your keys, including your uh, skull keys, get taken away. Make plenty of these until you find skull keys. In fact, if you're really paranoid, get 99 skull keys and get 99 of in export. And export magic lock. Why make this? Seriously. Ignore it. Rel time. That's quickness. Make your party much more quicker. If you need a more of a dex boost, go ahead and do so. And Bet Zen summons insects. It's all right for a summon spell. Again, you have party members that's more competent than summers. I should say summons. And Zoo, sweet wind. Looks like a cone of sleep. If you need to sleep, a group of foes. This is a useful spell. Now, on to the sixth circle. The sixth circle requires level six on your character. So here we go. Wiz and Yelm, this is x ray spell. It could see rooms that is normally not seen. In other words, good to uh, scout your foes out. And Zen X Charm. This will also uh, charm foes, charm party members. Party members get possessed. Yeah, this is like a cure possession spell. Great to have. Make 99 of these, trust me. Quas and Wiz. Confused. It's all right if you want to make it, but you got better uh, Circle 6 spells to do. Now, uh, this next one, you definitely want to make 99 of these ASAP. In Vast Poor Yum. This is the Tremor spell. It attacks all foes. It won't kill them all, but like, for example, uh, weaker to mid-level foes, great to take them out with this spell, too. Also, a nice spell to finish off foes you already soften with other spells, too. On to the seventh circle. Here is the circle seven of magic, quite a bit, and it does require level seven. In Quas Wiz, map here, this is better than a gem. If you want to make a lot of these, that's uh, fine. I have uh, gems, that's uh, good enough for me. Sank Lore, invisibility spell. If you really want to, to go ahead and use this, this is a great spell to do so. In Zen, this will summon a clone. This is like a target dummy if you want to go that route. In Quasa, Court, Fear spell, it's all right, but pass. And, and uh, this is a negate magic spell. I'm going to say this is great to have until you get a certain key item. After that, this key item will get you through the game. I'll explain a little bit more on that when we get to the end game, of course, experience grinding. Zen Corp, this is a kill spell, kills one foe, doesn't always work. And Nox Herd, this is poison when it's okay, but there's better uh, spells out there for offense or debuffing. On to the final circle, which is the eighth circle. The uh, circle eight spell, you're required to get level eight. That's right, hit the cap, everyone. That's 6,400 experience points, by the way, for those who want to know that. Or just came during the course of the video, look for spells. And Manai Corp revives dead party members. That's the great news. Bad news, outside combat only. You get out of combat, a few party members dead, cast this baby. Fast Rel Port, this is the gate travel spell. As long as you know uh, the moon locations, like for example, number two is uh, Castle Britannia area, you get to travel to there. This works in the underground and dungeons. Kalzan Corp, this will summon demon. This is a weaker demon, so this is not like Ultima Online. If you summon a demon, you lose karma. In Ultima 5, you do not. If you want to do that, go ahead and do so. And time, this is a negate time spell. This one's all right, but I feel if I have better tactics, I kick some butt. Now, I'm going to go ahead and skip this next one, but I'm going to go talk about Inflam Her. This is a uh, Flame Wind. It's all right. And the last spell in the circle, that's, uh, I should say, Circle 8 or the 8th Circle, is Invas Grave Corp. Cone of Energy, the Finger of Death. Cone of Death. 
the destroyer of all demons and dragons. It destroys everything except for the Shadow Lords. Uh, this magic is powerful. It can one-two shot demons and dragons. Anything else that's lower than them, they are gone. This will wreck foes like crazy. Bad news is it costs uh, 8 mana, so if you have 30 uh, intelligence, you only have 3 casts. So, uh, if, for example, if you're the avatar and you have 3 mages in your party, guess what? You're going to be casting this quite a bit. This was used in the last dungeon and some tougher dungeons. I regret not getting to level 8 for Deceit. And this spell is like the, uh, it erases all, basically. And I'm going to go ahead and read my note anyways for fun. Get to level 8 and make this ASAP times 99. Seriously, make 99 of these and you can rule Ultima 5. That's it for magic, so we're going to go ahead and get to the next topic of this guide. In Ultima 5, you have a total of 6 party members you could recruit for the maximum. My advice is start out with 4, one of each, which is yourself, the avatar, the fi a fighter, a bard, and of course a mage. Now, Shimino and Ilolo, who you start out with, are great assets you want to keep them in the party i am probably say for the mages Mariah's the best and then if you want to go full mage Jana and John's uh, good as well uh Ilolo's wife she's a good uh, bard too if you really want another fire uh sentry or Dupree's uh, great as well up to you on how you want to set your party up my uh playthrough I actually did was his three mages a bard a fighter and myself the avatar and if you uh, want to put any uh, party members away you don't like no more so, use the end system for uh, that. Let's talk about combat and trap chesses. In Ultima 5, Warriors of Destiny, you will eventually will get yourself into trouble, aka combat. So we're going to go ahead and use the uh, beginner spot, which I will go into much more uh, greater uh, detail later on about experience farming early on. So anyways, uh, we're going to go ahead and talk about we do go into combat with the trolls. We're going to say no for uh, paying the uh, toll. Uh, combat simple. You could either uh, just uh, let everybody have their turn. Or if you want to focus on one character for experience gaining, then select the uh, number for uh, that. My advice for uh, combat is uh, keep your cool. And yes, you could retreat. You have to uh, go back the direction where you uh, came from. And one thing about uh, combat, you need to be careful. I'm going to go ahead and say it too. If you're using, like for example, any other ranged weapons that's not a magic axe, your foes draw near, be, be ready to hit the R button to uh, change your weapons. So this way you have melee weapons. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to damage them. Other than that, uh, we're going to go ahead and kill this last troll. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you all on these uh, treasure chests that can't be trapped. It should uh, not be long at all. A few more hits and this troll should uh, go. There you go. Troll kill. Victory is uh, for ours. So here's the deal. Hit the S button to search. So this way you can find items and guts or better yet treasure chests. Hit S always to search traps. So this one's not trapped. So we're in Jimmy the lock. If the key broke breaks, that means it's no trap. If uh, it says the trap's been disarmed by, after you Jimmy the lock, that means you uh, got rid of the trap. So make sure you hit the G button to get everything. And that's about it for uh, this part. I'm going to go ahead and give everybody some good combat tactics. So here we uh, go. Now when you first start out in Ultima 5, great idea to have everybody starting with their slings. You're asking, why is uh, slings? Well, they don't uh, cost ammunition. Now eventually you want to move uh, up to uh, bows and uh, crossbows and the magic axe. Reason being is you want to make sure you pick them off from a safe distance. If you uh, can do that, that's good. Also a good idea to uh, make sure you check everybody's experience points and uh, use the uh, 1 through uh, 6 system so this way you can level up whatever character you want. Uh, just remember why I uh, warned previously, make sure uh, if uh, foes are too close to you, switch to a melee weapon. Good idea uh, for uh, strength users to use uh, blunt weapons, non-strength uh, characters, that's not high strength. Go ahead and of course uh, use, uh, I should say, dex weapons. So for example, I'm having a uh, Lolo. I'm going to switch to uh, Shimino, and he's going to use his magic axe through the battle just to uh, take this foe out. Because Shimino needs experience points. And just remember, you have a halberd, or uh, I should say Morningstar. You have advantage of uh, attacking two tiles too. And you can also attack one tile with that too. Magic axes are your best friend. Make sure you save up money for those, because if everybody has a magic axe, melee or uh, range, yeah, no penalties at all. And like I said before, if you need a retreat, go ahead and do so. 
Let's talk about uh, next part, how experience works in Ultima 5. In Ultima 5, I'm going to go ahead and say this uh, now. You want to uh, make sure whoever gets the killing blow will get the experience points. It's like 3 and 4. So if you, uh, for example, we need Elo Low to get a level, he's close to it, and then uh, go ahead and have Elo Low, of course, uh, fight. Uh, best way to do this is use the uh, 1 through 6 command. Ilolo is uh, number 3. We're going to select number 3 and have him fight. Just remember, who gets the killing blow gets the experience points. Great idea to uh, get everybody uh, evenly level up. Except for your avatar character, make sure he's uh, level up ahead of time by one level. So uh, this way, you could do the uh, trick of uh, leveling up and de-leveling up, which I will uh, talk later on. And that's about it on how experience works in Ultima 5. Let's go ahead and talk about the next topic, which I do believe is traveling. Traveling in Ultima 5 can be fun and also dangerous too. So I'm going to go ahead and explain about the methods of traveling and the land tiles. So first of all, the uh, grass, you can move freely in the roads. Now uh, the uh, forest, for example, You'll move really slow. You can't move on the ocean. Now, uh, be careful of marshes and uh, lava. You'll uh, take damage. With marshes, you get poison. Lava, just take fire damage. Other than that, hills, you move slow. Now, there's impassable mountains. However, some of them you could climb with a certain item. Now, next up, we're going to talk about our horses. Now, horses, uh, you move a little bit faster. You could uh, also uh, move around the uh, certain things like forests and such, but it'll be, still be slow. But it's a good alternative travel method. Now, one way to get a free horse is uh, go to a well when it says, what's your wish? When you, when you look at it or uh, search it, you say horse. And if it's at the right well, you get a free horse like I did. Now, the next method of traveling, I'm going to go ahead and explain, is the sea. There's two types of boats. Skiffs, those are rowboats, and frigates, like a pirate ship. So we're going to go ahead and, uh, of course, uh, use the uh, rowboat. Rowboats are great for, uh, I should say, shore and, of course, uh Low tide, I say normal tide. Uh, it cannot go on rough seas. Now, on the other hand, the uh, frigate could uh, go on the uh, regular seas like this and rough seas. In other words, you won't take damage at all. Now, if you hit yell, you can hit uh, yell for hoist. You'll go faster. A certain item will make your ship faster in hoist mode. Now, uh, be careful of uh, you know this speed because if you uh, hit the uh, shore, you'll take damage. See, it says haul damage. Only way to uh, heal the hall, by the way, is camping. More on that uh, later on. Well, actually, when we get to the camping section. Other than that, uh, definitely uh, unhoist uh, when you are close to the land and hoist when you're out in open sea. Last but not least is the magic carpet. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and explain this now. This carpet could go over uh, shores and, of course, normal ocean, not rough waters. If you go in rough waters, you'll take damage. Great thing about this is it'll open up so many areas. You could even go to a lighthouse that's nearby without any trouble. See, that's easy with the magic carpet. So definitely know your modes of travel and uh, watch out if you're on the carpet in the rough seas, you'll take damage. Try to get the carpet ASAP. That's it for uh, traveling and the world. In Ultima 5, you're gonna need to rest and also uh, when you have enough experience points, you're gonna need to uh, rest and hope a certain spirit appears. There's a few things that happens now. If you uh, rest for nine hours, that's what I suggest. Then what happens is if it's right, uh, then of course you get healed. If not, it says no effect. Uh, another thing is during rest, you could get ambushed. Be careful on that. Uh, another good thing is, is if your character's at the moment of, of a certain level and you rest and a certain spirit appears, then you'll be able to level up. The Ankh will uh, make sure that certain spirit appears big time. See, when you rest, a uh, um, certain amount of hit points heal and all your magic points heal. Definitely rest a lot in dungeons later on because you're going to need to uh, do that. And if you're out in the open sea and your, your ship's like damage, make sure you arrest. When it says party heals in the seas, that means your ship gets healed too. So definitely uh, rest at the right time and don't be afraid to rest at all. You can also rest to a uh, lower, I should say, advanced time, I should say, more like it. So we're going to go ahead and talk about karma, skull key farming, and the law. I'm going to go ahead and cover this topic while I'm in Minoc. So in Minoc, uh, we're going to talk about first the skull keys. After that, we're going to talk about karma and then the law. So uh, here's the deal. You see this tree, and of course, in Minoc, around noon, the keys are usually dropped there. They're only like once a day. If you get real lucky between noon and, of course, when you hit it at midnight, you might get two a day. Make sure you farm skull keys here. 
uh, as much as possible. Watch out for shadow lords, though. Now, as for the law, with exception of Britain, guards will ask for bribes. Try to avoid uh, patrolling guards at all costs. Otherwise, you'll pay 40 to 60 gold or worse, half in Minoc in this case. Now, another thing we're going to talk about is the karma system. Uh, if you have not got to the shrines or did shrine quests yet, this is one of the best ways to do it. Now, you talk to this NPC, keep on going until you get to a point where you get to give out gold. Yes, you're going to need gold for uh, giving money to beggars. And if you've done this right, what happens is uh, said beggar will uh, give you one karma point. It's a, a nice way to uh, get that karma up while firing for uh, keys too early on. I do advise uh, doing this uh, method for a while, also uh, this way. You will uh, get enough skull keys and karma. Just watch out for uh, guards too. So I'm just trying to go around so this way I get another uh, points of karma. This will uh, take about, uh, I should say, uh, a few, uh, for, hour, for in game hours, a few hours for the NPC to uh, allow you to do karma again. You can't just cannot do it uh, like uh, staying at this NPC right away and just farm it. No, you have to walk around some this time. And uh, just keep on saying yes, yes, and give them your gold. And you get karma. So I'm at 92. I'm going to go ahead and uh, show this one more time. Then I'm going to go ahead and get, get into greater details of some of the topics in this part of this uh, video. And yeah, as I said, uh, yeah, just make sure uh, you watch out guard patrols. I'm saying it again, especially in my knock. Britain's a safe place. And yeah, that's about it. So I'm just walking around, make sure we uh, get there. And show you this is nice early... Uh, game to uh, get that karma up so we're almost uh, there this should be enough for me to uh get the course talk this uh, nice npc who needs money so i'll finish that up and i'll uh, go for each uh, section so here we uh, go and there you have it we got from 92 to 93 karma with ease here's the uh, karma point chart now speaking with hatred with a certain npc or so gives you minus one karma Ceiling is minus two uh, per treasure chest or something else on the ground. So, for example, if you decide to raid a certain treasure room, uh, per chest you open up, you get minus two karma. Killing innocents, including guards, equals ton of karma loss. So, try to have money on hand or better yet, avoid guards so this way you don't have to fight the guards. And yeah, don't kill the innocent. Bad ideal. Freeing prisoners, some of it is a one time, I think most of it or all is a one time deal. It's uh, two karma points per prisoner you free. A good price to start freeing prisoners is in you. Easy karma points there. Giving gold to beggars like I uh, did is a uh, plus one karma. It's on a timer before you could be able to get more, but still it's a good t uh, place to do that. Other NPCs can uh, give you one time karma of uh, plus one to plus five. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and talk about the shrines. That's the uh, last thing I'll do for that. So let's go for the next part of this uh, topic. Since I'm talking about the law, yeah, those are guards. So uh, if you decide to uh, pay the gold, that's fine. Just avoid guards in the future. That can range, like I said, for 40 to 60 uh, gold pieces. That's not Britain, but in the other uh, virtue towns except for Minoc. Minoc says it's sacrifice to ask for half. And you have, uh, I should say, uh, 5,000 gold. They'll ask for 2,500. Yeah, they're evil. But what happens if you do resist? If caught in a fight, you will lose tons of karma. Killing guards is more karma loss. So starting a fight, karma loss is there. Killing them is even more. So try not to fight. Otherwise, you got to rebuild that karma once again. If you uh, do not resist uh, by not uh, paying the bribe, you go to jail and you. So if you don't uh, resist arrest, say, take me to jail, you get sent to you. Now, uh, I say jail and you means all your uh, keys, including normal and skull keys, are gone. Now, that's the bad news. Now, good news is if you have any spells... Yeah, you keep those, and even better news is you keep your gold. Now, in you, there's a certain NPC that will uh, sell you keys, so this way you could jimmy your, the lock and get out of prison. All right, and then get out of, of course, town ASAP. I'm going to go ahead and talk about Blackthorn Castle. I feel this is important to talk about in this guide. I decided to do some research and such. What happens if you don't have a certain item equipped for Castle Blackthorn? And this is important to uh, know. Do not, have, uh, do not go to Castle Blackthorn until you get a certain item. You should know what that item is. So anyways, here we go. If you do not have a certain item on, nor was equipped, and are caught, you are, you get sent to a jail at Castle Blackthorn. This is a special jail, not a good one. When at jail in that castle, you're given a choice of giving up certain words or so. Uh, if you do or do not, what happens is, is uh, one of your party members dies. Yeah, Blackthorn does not keep his word at all, even after you uh, give a certain uh, word or a phrase, which is not good. And uh, by the way, that party member, yeah, I saw a video of that. And also I did research. 
that party member is gone for good. So, for example, uh, you bring uh, Katrina with you and you just yourself there at Castle Blackthorn. Both of you get caught and you refuse to give out the word or you give out the word. No matter what, Katrina dies and she's gone from the game for good. Yeah, she's been taken out of there. Uh, another thing I'm going to go ahead and say is avoid Castle Blackthorn until you have that certain item. I'll give you a hint. Start infiltrating a certain faction and that'll be on your way to getting a certain item. So I'm going to go ahead and, of course, to talk about shrines. So here's the deal about the best way to get karma via the shrines. After doing the shrine quest, let's go to any shrine and type in that shrine location, name, and then the mantra. So for example, you completed the uh, shrine of compassion quest. You go back to the shrine of compassion. Then, of course, you say the name and the mantra. You say compassion and the mantra three times. After you do that, you're going to be asked to donate gold. It's zero through uh, nine. Zero just go away from the shrine. Nothing ha happens, no foul. And then uh, 1 through uh, 9 is the number of gold in hundreds. Now, 100 pieces of uh, gold equals 1 karma point. So, you'll be spending some money to get some karma points. The max of that is 9. That is the best way to get karma up. Yeah, it will cost gold, but don't panic. I have a nice foolproof plan to get some gold very easily. That will be coming up in this guide. Uh, that's about it for karma, skull key farming, and the law. So, let's go to the next topic. Death in Ultima 5, people say it could be brutal, not pretty. Well, guess what? It's much more easier than Ultima 4. Ultima 4, you lose your equipment and, of course, other things too. Ultima 5, you can lose only one thing, experience points. The total amount of experience points you lose uh, on your character depends, you guessed it, your karma. I didn't uh, explain this in the karma section because I want to tie death and karma all at once at the same time. So, uh, low karma, for example, you have zero karma, you're doing a lot of bad things, and for instance, Mariah dies, if she had like, a, I should say, 800 experience points, she'll lose all 800 experience points. She'll be dropped down quite a few levels too, yes, when you die, and you uh, go under a certain level threshold, you de-level. Now, if you have high karma, on the other hand, like for example, I'm going to say it, 99 karma, you're only going to lose 1% of your total experience points. So, uh, Mariah, for instance, has 800 uh, in, uh, I should say, uh, 10 ex experience points. She's going to lose uh, about 1% of that. So, uh, you can use uh, death as a, a tool to level up and de-level up. I'm going to go ahead and explain that uh, tactic uh, later on in the uh, video. So, we're going to go ahead and talk about the mapping system. Let's uh, talk about the map system in Ultima 5. Now, if you have a certain uh, item called the gem, you get to view the map. Now, here's a great uh, news about the uh, map. It can be in the normal world, the underworld, and of course, I should say the dungeons. You definitely want to use that uh, map for the dungeons. So, for instance, that uh, red square, I think it looks like it's a red or brown square on the right. That's a bridge. And then way on the left is the castle and then the towns of uh, Britain area. There's the lighthouse too, mountains and such. So, don't be afraid to use the map. If you run out of gems, there's a spell that can, you, you can also view the map with too. I'm going to go ahead and go over the moon gates and the uh, moonstone. So here we uh, go. So as for the moon gates, they're the same as uh, Ultima 4. Here's my chart I did draw. Uh, number one is uh, moon glow. That's the new moon. Uh, now for Britain area, that's crescent waxing. And then uh, number three is uh, first quarter is jellum. Uh, gibbous waxing is you. That's number four there. Five, the full moon is Minoc. Uh, gibbous waning is Trinsic. Now number six. Number seven is the last quarter is Scar Bray. Number eight is crescent crescent waning that's new magentia yeah it's not magentia it's new magentia this time as i said before it's at night now the bad part is it's only uh one or two uh those uh cycles i just listed off you'll be able to uh get to so definitely uh, look up in your uh your i uh, say ui of the game and you'll see uh, where you're at, at night for the moon gates now if you have the gate travel spell you could travel freely to those uh spots so i'm gonna go ahead and uh, now talk about moonstones Here's the deal about moonstones. Now, if you uh, take a, a moonstone from a certain place, I just list it. The moon gate will no longer appear at that spot. So if you decide to take one, say, from uh, Minoc, which is number five, well, guess what? You have a moonstone you get to drop. You could drop it almost anywhere as long as there's grass. So, for example, in the underworld, what I did was I uh, dropped a moon, uh, uh, I should say moonstone in front of the dungeon wrong. By the way, that's going to be a tactic later on I'm going to talk about 
uh, during this part of this uh, video. But anyways, you drop it there. Instead of going Monarch from now on, we use Gate Travel or uh, at that, uh, I should say, uh, Moon Phase. You go to that spot instead. Moonstones are very useful, so this way you get to certain uh, reagent farming spots or certain locations in the game. So I'm going to go ahead and give my suggestion on uh, which uh, Moonstones you should keep on the ground at that, their spot. So here's my uh, Moonstones to keep suggestion. You definitely want to keep one in the Britain area. That's number two because you're going to be going in the Britain area a lot. The castle, the town, you name it. Gelm's a good place to keep it there too. You can go there two or three times. You, you definitely want to keep it there because of some reagent prices and Epith Abbey. Now for Trinsic, you would definitely want to keep that there. Uh, main reason is, of course, the Trinsic area and then later on Serpent's Hold. You can get there via the Magic Carpet. I put down New Magentia because uh, in case you want to go there once or twice, that's fine. But if you do not, then uh, take the Moonstone from New Magentia. Now, uh, I didn't mention Minox, Scarabray, and of course uh, Moonglow. Because you can use the magic carpet to get there very easily, especially Moonglow and Scar Bray, because you go on the uh, shores, which is the light ocean, the magic carpet go on there safely. That's about it for uh, this uh, topic. The next topic I'm going to talk about are the dungeons. Eventually, down the line, you're going to go into dungeons. So here's the deal the view of dungeons are uh, different, it's like a 3D like view. You have to uh, go direction north, east, or west. And yet there are monsters in dungeons. Watch out for uh, traps, for example, pitfalls. Now I'm going to go ahead and talk about each of the danger in the dungeon. So here we uh, go. So for instance, you want to search everywhere. So this way you discover a trap. If you can, I believe that's by dexterity. So high dexterity, you discover traps in uh, pits more often than not. You can also use the gem to uh, view the area around you. Now as for monsters, they'll be on the screen. If they see you, you fight them in combat. Now there are dungeon rooms. Here's the deal about dungeon rooms. Let me go ahead and explain this now, which I feel this is important. Dungeon rooms, uh, they will refill if you do not clear the entire room. If you clear the entire room, they will never refill again. But for the most part, you want many of these rooms cleared out so you have to find them for good. With the exception of a certain room, which I will uh, explain towards the end of the video. So, Fenton, what dungeons should I definitely do first? I'm going to go and give you two dungeons you should do first. Uh, you want to do Despise, even if you don't have uh, certain the key items. And wrong, you need a certain key item called the Crown. I'll explain more on that, but still. You want to make sure you're ready to go after you get all the information in order to get sent to the dungeons. And yes, you're going to need a certain phrase in order to open up said dungeons. So that's about it for uh, dungeons. I'm going to go ahead and talk about the next topic, which is uh, the deed level and level up trick. So you all know about, of course, uh, losing experience points upon death. And then uh, you get some experience back based on your karma percentage. So here's the deal. I have 95 karma. I'm reviving Ilolo. So the loss should not be uh, that much. Uh, because he died and Mariah too, they're deed leveling up. See? And reviving them uh, back now the trick is that you want to do is after you just leveled up especially on uh, your uh, party members you want to make sure you uh, de-level them now if your avatar character is at 30 stats each then yeah keep your avatar character alive since level 8 is the uh, cap and great ideal to uh, go in that level with 30 strength dexterity and intelligence so we're just de-leveling at this time reviving Unfortunately, you low, low loss of level, so did Mariah. So I'm going to go ahead and show up the uh, level up part. After some off screen grinding at the Troll Bridge, which will be coming up in a, a bit, and we have enough experience points to level up our characters, in this case, Elolo and Mariah, we're going to go ahead and camp. The only way to level up in Ultima 5, I said before, is to camp. And yeah, you're going to look for a certain uh, spirit that's familiar that will level up. I have the Alk on so this way I could try to track the uh, spirit. The spirit is totally random. You could get the spirit under 2 minutes and 2 quick sessions or over 30 minutes. Good luck getting the spirit. The spirit will always not ap appear even though if you are the uh, right moment to level up. So yeah, this is like tedious but it is well worth doing. So uh, once you level up and then you just repeat the process of D-level again and then level up until you get the proper stat points you definitely want on your characters. 
I could probably say for the other party members, uh, I'll definitely say uh, try to get is uh, above uh, at least 20 in the, some of the stats, especially their primary stats, maybe above 25 on those. Yep, there's the uh, apparition. This is what we uh, want. So now because we got the apparition, uh, good news about that is everybody's going to get healed. Your magic points are going to get refilled. And of course, those uh, characters who have the uh, correct amount of experience points to level up will get their levels. And stats are random, so <laughs> that's the bad news. Good news is you just keep on leveling up and indeed leveling up until you max out your character stats by 30. It's a long process, but you will become more powerful towards the end. So here's the uh, deal. The uh, best spot to get some early uh, uh, game experience points is the Troll Bridge. That is actually east of Castle Britannia. So let's uh, go east. There's a bridge. This is where the trolls live at. So we're just going to hit the space bar to pass time until we get a message that's saying uh, there's trolls under the bridge. See that? Those uh, uh, spy trolls under the bridge. And each of your characters has to sneak across. If you want an experience grind, you want to make sure someone gets caught. And then there's a troll. You say no, then you fight the trolls. Now, upon, of course, uh, defeating the trolls, they'll either drop guts, which is sometimes food absolutely uh, nothing or treasure chests that are either trapped or not trapped and yeah you get about four experience points per trolls this is good early on this will not get you through the uh, game later on but still this is a uh, great to uh, get some experience points especially if you want to level up and indeed level up pretty uh, quickly uh, too so uh, let's talk about the best spot in the game to farm some gold so Fenton What's the best spot in Ultima 5 to farm some gold? Castle Britannia. So after, of course, you tried the Troll Bridge of getting some easy uh, gold early on. You got some keys, torches, and gems, and also uh, you farm Minoc. For Skull Keys, well, you want to go to Castle Britannia. So uh, just keep on going north, and then uh, go, of course, uh, east. And then you could go up. Uh, if you don't want to waste any more of your normal keys, go north again, and then uh, go down the stairs, climb down. Now, uh, keep on uh, going at this point, and th uh, there'll be a sign. That's the shop. Remember this uh, later on if you want to sell some stuff from the treasure room. Now, this will cost you karma and later on gold to replenish it via the shrines. So, there's the door there. That's the treasure room. Uh, use the item that is the skull key. There we go. I have 92 of them. I've been doing that for a while and testing this out. So, use the skull key, point in direction there, and that's it. You're in the treasure room. Here's the good news. We're going to open that up. Because I opened one chest, that's going to drop me by two karma from 96 to 94. We're going to grab some items. We get some two-hand hammers, long swords, leather armor. You get most of the armor in the game except for the mysterious uh, ones and the glass sword. So, uh, we're going to open it again and lose some karma. But you know what? We're getting uh, also some good stuff too. Oh yeah, we get potions also. It's a great way to farm uh, resurrection scrolls also. So, we're going to go ahead and grab all this. See, we're going to grab some uh, stuff. I'll lose karma for it, but you know what? It's going to give me some easy money. We could get right away if we have enough of those skull keys. Uh, most of the best equipment in the uh, game. Well, except for the armor. That's uh, another uh, topic down the line if you discover what that armor is. So after you clean out the treasure room, you want to do is immediately uh, go back upstairs. And what I did was I uh, exited and then I went east and then there. Climb up, then climb down again. After that, repeat the process until uh, you get enough money. I'm going to probably say around uh, 65 to 75. Stop there, then go to the shrines to uh, boost up that uh, karma. You'll pay for it. And then you get 99 karma, go to that shop, sell all that uh, gear there, and that's about it. You make some uh, serious money. Then you repeat the process again. After that, go buy some reagents to 99. Max out your food, and if you uh, want to, uh, uh, get some other things too, like uh, gems, keys... And uh, torches if you cannot get any more via the uh, guild shops. And that's how you uh, make uh, gold the best way in Ultima 5. So last topic we're going to talk about is the late game aka best experience far, uh, spot to farm in the game. Now for the best spot to farm in game experience points is the dungeon wrong. You're going to need to drop a uh, moonstone in front of the uh, wrong entrance. Uh, it's at level 8. Make sure you clear the uh, last room there. And then you see the room I'm at. Well, guess what? That center room that is uh, west of our character, that's our target room. 
Now, here's the deal. We're going to kill some demons. However, we're going to need the crown. The uh, crown, uh, when you get at a certain place, will negate magic. Now, if you wear the crown, guess what, everyone? Uh, the demons, yes, you'll be facing demons, will not be able to, you guess, to possess you. That means they're stuck in the walls. You're going to need also either the uh, halberd or uh, the mooring star in order to pull this off. And we're gonna demonstrate that right now with our uh, main character, the Avatar. Or in case, my character, Fenton. So, I'm level 7, about to get to level 8. So, you wanna do a switch to one, uh, the number of character you're gonna level up. And then immediately attack the walls like this. You wanna only attack three of the four corners. If you decide to clear all four corners, room's cleared, you cannot do this trick. It's null and void. And you have to uh, walk around randomly or farm the troll bridge forever. This method, we just kill a demon, uh, that's 19 experience points. Just keep on uh, doing this until, uh, I should say, a corner is uh, definitely cleared. Uh, this will uh, not only get you experience points, but it'll get you close to level 8. And I'm going to say this, this definitely helped out my, uh, me be in the game with uh, my main character at 8, and of course my other characters at 7. If you want to do the extra uh, legwork, definitely uh, get your mages up to 8 ASAP. Too, so uh, this way they cast the circle 8 spells you could beat the game with the avatar casting circle 8 spells But you're gonna have to do some uh, trickery like I did in order to uh, do that See we're already cleared out a uh, section in the wall and uh, let me uh, go ahead and do another section and There we go now uh, each of the uh, wall sections. They are uh, two to three demons uh, That's right though. You kill one. There's another another until you can't do it. So if you're attacking air at this point, move to a corner. Once three of the four corners move, then exit the room ASAP. Then come back in and then repeat the process again until you actually do it. So I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead and then show you the experience points I uh, did uh, get. After clearing three of the four corners, I was level seven. Now I have enough experience points to get the level eight. This is the best method to get the level eight. It'll take a few hours, but it is well worth doing so. Here's my final advice for Ultima 5. So first of all, when you uh, do start out, you can either transfer your character from 4 or uh, create a new character. Try to raise up decks as much as possible because that's one of the top stats and uh, strength. Then of course intelligence. Now another thing is, is uh, you want to make sure you get slings first so uh, this way you can attack foes from afar. Get ready to raid weapons when they are in melee range so this way you don't get penalized. Uh, another thing is make sure you make uh, Anox, this is a uh, cure poison, and Manite, which is a heal spell. So this way you have ability to uh, get rid of poison and ability, of course, to uh, heal up. Uh, another thing I'll uh, definitely uh, say is uh, make sure you, uh, when you're on ships, of course, uh, uh, hit the uh, hole up to uh, uh, rest the uh, ship's hull. This way it'll heal too. Uh, do the level up and de level up method, it'll work out well. Uh, use the spot I used to uh, at the start to farm karma, then uh, move to shrines for uh, that too. Use Minoc to uh, definitely uh, farm skull keys like crazy. Other than that though, make sure you talk to people, that's very important. If you play Ultima 4, you're going to have an advantage with that with mantras, shrines, and uh, other things uh, too. Make sure you uh, get the key items, that's very important. Now there's a certain NPC with a name spelled backwards, which is a uh, Judas. Don't recruit that NPC. Pick the best NPC you feel that is good, or if you have a favorite NPC, then stick with it uh, too. Just make sure you have at least one fire, one bard, and one mage. Last two slots you can fill if you out if you want to. I went mage heavy because of magic is uh, powerful towards the end of the game. That's it for my Don't Panic Ultima 5 Warriors of Destiny new player video guide. This is Lord Fett signing off. Thanks for watching and have a great day and night and do please stay safe. And do have some fun with this game. It's a total blast. Please subscribe to my channel for more classic and modern gaming just like this. If you like what you see then pick my suggestion on the upper left hand corner or YouTube suggestion on the bottom left hand corner. Have a great day or night and do enjoy the avatar. Have a good time at this tavern.